In this video, I'll show you some of the new features offered in DSP Trigger 1.1. We'll start by taking a look at the new interface, redesigned to be more powerful and intuitive. There is now a vastly improved input section, giving the user loads of visual feedback and new controls for adjusting the calibration. The blue area represents the input signal coming from your drum pad. The brown area represents a boundary that the transients must cross before a new hit is registered. It's derived from the combination of a threshold and a hit decay parameter. The white curve represents the profile of the last transient. For best results, adjust the threshold and decay to hug this line. Also new in this version is support for more input types. In addition to regular mesh and rubber pads, DSP Trigger now also handles cymbals, supporting bell, bow, and edge articulations, as well as choking with aftertouch when used in stereo mode. There's even a new microphone input, allowing just about anything to be used as a drum pad. Putting them all together, multiple instances of DSP Trigger allow you to process any number of pads, complete with crosstalk cancellation. In this version, the velocity curve controls have also been enhanced. Let's cycle a sample from a mesh snare pad to see how they work. By clicking and dragging in the velocity curve display, you can fine tune how DSP Trigger reacts to your pad. First, we'll pull down the max indicator to scale the maximum velocity downwards. Likewise, we can drag the minimum indicator up to scale the lowest velocity upwards. Furthermore, by dragging the diagonal line around the box area, we can adjust the transition between the min and the max, allowing you to fine tune the feel and response of a pad. Also new to this version is a preset section. Let's go back to our snare sample to see how presets work. By clicking on a kit piece image, DSP Trigger sets the corresponding note values in the articulation areas. This allows you to quickly switch to playing the hi-hat, for example, or any other kit piece. However, you can also store complete presets to any of the kit piece images. Let's make some changes to the velocity curve to show how this works. Now, by right-clicking on one of the kit pieces, we can select Right Preset to store the current settings in that slot. The preset can be easily recalled by selecting Load Preset from the same menu. Presets are global and are accessible to all instances of the plugin. Previously, I mentioned that DSP Trigger supports crosstalk cancellation between multiple instances of the plugin. However, crosstalk cancellation is also applied to MIDI passing through the plugin and onto a sampler. This is important if you plan to use DSP Trigger in combination with an existing kit. Here's what can happen without crosstalk cancellation. The strength of the snare hit causes the tom on the drum kit to trigger. By turning up the crosstalk threshold, these unwanted hits are detected and filtered out. <laughs> 